not from a very advantaged background. What are my chances in CAT 2019? In this, we will discuss some of the key ideas which we think people do think that it is not being from a very advantaged background. And we will discuss ideas on why that specific thing need not or might not bother you or your CAT preparation or change your CAT preparation strategy. The first idea we are going to discuss is I am not from CBSC medium or an ICSE medium. I studied in metric, state board, whatnot. So what are my chances for this with this exam? This exam tests plain vanilla, simple, basic uh, math, especially high school math. Uh, the exam is tough because it is competitive. It is not tough because it tests fancy ideas like an Olympiad does. So remember, all you need to do is cover your basics really well. That is very vital. After CAT 18, we really understand that knowing basics really well is so much more important than solving or knowing how to solve so many different types of questions in any topic per se. Also, the, the syllabus for uh, CBSE versus the state boards or the metric boards is not that different per se. At least in the last 10 years, it has changed drastically so that the, both the syllabus are as much similar as possible. The only difference is CBSE will test an idea, will teach you an idea and then will test something extra out of it or maybe mildly twist the question. But the state board will have book back questions where you can even go to the extent of memorizing a math question and then uh, putting it out on the paper and getting the exact marks required. So, but all of you have, irrespective of whatever syllabus that you have studied in, you have covered all the basics in your life. So remember that. And this is not rocket science. These are plain, simple topics that you need a lot of practice on. So, because if you are not from a CBSE background, believe me, you are not disadvantaged in any way at all. The next idea is, uh, I am not from an English medium schooling. So, how do I cope up with it? Uh, I'll quote an example. I know one... Uh, one of our students from 2IM in classroom, uh, he worked in a company in Coimbatore. Every weekend he used to travel to attend classes in Chennai. Coimbatore is like around 12 hours of travel, 10 plus hours of travel uh, one way. So he used to travel religiously every weekend to attend classes in Chennai. So he was from a Tamil medium background. He did not know how to frame two, three sentences together uh, when he started off classes in Jan Feb uh, two years ago. And then uh, he listened to the idea of having to read aggressively on a daily basis. He knew that his weakness area was reading. His weakness area was the VRC section. He did not know how to compensate for that part. So he read religiously every day. He did that so much that his score uh, surprised him and me as well. He scored north of 96 if I'm not wrong uh, in the VRC section. Better than the other two sections which he thought was his strong, strong suit. So he did end up getting couple of converts from new IMs in that year. Uh, so being from a Tamil medium is, or any vernacular medium other than English is not a drawback at all. So remember that you are as good as anybody else if you have it in you to put in the effort that is required for this exam. Another question that I get very frequently is that I am not strong at math or I am not an engineering grad. So I am not strong at math. How do I is this exam even for me? That is a question that I get very frequently. I can tell you this exam is for you as much as is it for anybody else. The exam is not skewed towards engineers. This exam is not uh, uh, favoring engineers if I'm not wrong. Uh, I am an engineer myself. Uh, I learned a lot of ideas like Z transform, Fourier transform, Laplace transform, all of this in engineering. In my plus one and plus two, I did uh, differential calculus, integral calculus, matrices, a lot of different ideas. Uh, but none of them is relevant to CAD prep. I can tell you that it is not relevant to CAT prep. The only mild advantage that engineers might have is that they have been in touch with math longer than others. That is the only advantage they might have. Even if it is an advantage, it is only mild advantage because this test idea that have been taught in high school, not more than that. So if you are a BCom grad or a BBA grad who has done math until 10th standard, you are slightly out of touch of math. But not like this impossible. It's all the ideas you've been taught in school time. Now you'll have to go back, revisit the ideas, learn them well and practice a lot. That is all you'll have to do. So believe me, if you're weak at math or if you think you've been out of touch, this will also be applicable for people who have been working for three years and now who want to try out CAT and then they feel like, hey, I've been out of touch with math for the last six years or so. So what do I, how do I go about it? All you need to do is get back to basics. Learn everything from basics. The understanding is of prime essence. So the more you understand, the better your math scores are going to be in this exam. So please don't worry about this monster called the quant section in the cat. It is not made for engineers. If anything, 
every year we see lot of engineers converting lot of IMs. That is because the uh, applicant pool has a bias which has lot of engineers in itself. So let's say there are 80 engineers and 20 non-engineers applying for this exam. And the convert of 10 has 8 engineers, maybe 9, maybe 7 and 2 or 3 non-engineers. Obviously, it is a natural representation of what people who are the people who apply for this exam and not otherwise. So you can be assured that, that this exam is not rigged against non-engineers. I have a bad profile, how do I compensate for it? What do I even do about it? You can't build a great profile in 8 months or 10 months. We will have a separate long video on that. But now what you can do about it uh, is prepare well, get a great score in this exam and also take up a job. This is the next idea that we are going to discuss. I cannot quit my job. I have a lot of family constraints or I have loans that I have to pay back. I have my education loan for my undergrad. Oh, am I in a bad place compared to others in terms of cap prep, I can tell you, you are definitely in a good place compared to others in cap prep. Uh, I for one, I will give my example, I had big loan after my undergraduation was over. I Even if I wanted to quit and prepare from my home, I could not have done that because I needed my salary to repay the loans back. But I can tell you, I kind of was in a bad job or was involved in bad politics in my first job. So I knew I had to get out. I knew I needed a way out. I did not crib about my bad job and quit my job and then sit and prepare. Also because of my financial constraints that I could not quit my job, but I also did not want to quit my job. But I used my bad job as good motivation to make sure I nailed this exam. So make sure you also take up a, if you have a, happen to have a bad job, not everybody is blessed with a good job or with a good team and good manager and all of that. If you happen to have a bad job, maybe you should suck it up and then say, hey, this is a good opportunity for me. This is a good motivation for me to definitely get out of this job and get into a B school, maybe change my track, change my position where I am, change my salary and all of that. But this is definitely good motivation, especially if you are someone who is stuck in a job and then who says, hey, I cannot quit my job and I have to be in my job, you are in a fantastic place. Your motivation will take you to places, I can tell you that. Recently, uh, someone from some NIT had emailed me saying he uh, had quit his job and then wanted to prepare for CAT 18. He could not convert any colleges in the top 20, 25. Someone who has studied in NIT is usually one among the millions, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I, I've never got an opportunity to study in NIT uh, for my undergrad per se. So, for someone who is naturally in a better pool for selection, could not convert this exam or crack this exam and get into great places, in spite of him being from an NIT, the idea or what you should take away from this is that the idea of sitting in home and then preparing for this exam is useless. You need, see, for example, in UPSC, probably you'll need 12 hours, 13 hours of preparation every day or even more than that so that you can crack this exam. CAT is not an exam like that. CAT, you need to prepare for 4 or 5 hours every day and that is the maximum that you should do. You should not be sitting in a place and then preparing for CAT for 9, 10 hours every day. Probably you'll go mad. So don't do that. Don't take a break. Don't take a drop. If you get a job, if you have some placements coming to your college, definitely take it up. Take up a job and then prepare. This is also very relevant to the bad profile thing. If you have a bad profile, you have nothing to talk about in your interview or your questions are going to be bad about why your 10 score, 10 score is bad or a 12 score is bad. But if you have a good job, if you have been working in your job well, then that is a motivation for you because that is something that you can talk about in your interview, which is a good point as well. Also, the colleges give you additional points for working as well. So what are my chances? You will, uh, am I screwed up? No, you are definitely not. Your chances are as good as anybody else. I can tell you, every year you hear about 2-3 people who have scored 99.8 and still have not, some have not even gotten calls. Some even after they got calls could not convert all 3 of A, B, C. So am I also screwed like that? Did they have a bad profile? See, you can't change what your past is. So don't go about it. Only thing that you can fix is you can take up this exam very seriously and get a fantastic CAT score. I think that is very vital because someone has to iterate this and then say, hey, that is three people out of 600, 700 odd people. Because those three are very unique, that news comes up, it blows up out of proportion. So all you can see is, hey, someone with even a 99.8 does not get an offer. But so many people with 99.8 will get an offer. There are only very few people who are playing unlucky because of something or some uh, skeletons in their closet that they don't have it under control. Uh, they did not get that chance. Make sure you think of it as the exam gives you a fair chance against everybody else and not that you are screwed up when you are starting off for this preparation. So what are my chances if I am not from a very advantaged background? 
uh, honestly speaking, I think your chances are better than any normal average student because of the things that you go through, because of the things you are not advantaged, you know your weaknesses better than others. There will be someone who is graduated from a, a fantastic English medium speaking school or a convent. He would naturally think that his verbal section is good, but you are someone who knows that your verbal is not good. So you know you have to put in so much more effort than others. I think that is a fantastic advantage for someone who is disadvantaged because you know what your weaknesses are and you know how to plug them, you know how to fix them and you know you need to work more than others but you know the results are going to be fabulous. So take it from me, if you are not really advantaged compared to others then probably your chances of cracking this exam is much better than what others have. Best wishes for Captain.